stay a while and listen. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another talky style video where I just talk about things not so much on the screen, just mainly something to listen to. So before I actually get into this, I will mention something. I did say in the last video that the next video would have been the best Gundams of 2018, but that had to be delayed a little bit because I wanted to make a premiere for that video using YouTube's new style of video premiering, but because my internet is so spotty, so wonky, so unreliable, I can't actually do that right now. Maybe once again in future with something else I'll do that, but not now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upload it as usual, and that is probably going to be about 12 midnight Irish time. So that would be early morning in Asia, and maybe mid-afternoon or afternoon US time on Sunday US. Asia will be Monday morning, okay? So once again, that will be midnight Ireland, so earlier in the day on the Monday in the US, and that'll be early morning Tuesday Asia time, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, let's get right into this. What I'm gonna do is, because we're not looking back at what came out in 2018 yet, let's look forward to what we have to look forward to in 2019. So once again, this right here is the Bandai Hobby website. This is where you can see everything that's coming from Bandai Spirits next year. That's Gundam, as you can see there, anything that's Star Wars, as well as the figureized things, including Ultraman and Dragon Ball. I won't really be talking about anything besides Gunpla because this video right here is just going to be about Gunpla. There's the URL again if you want it. That's bandaihobby.net forward slash schedule. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. So first I'll mention there is the dates here. So these are the dates they come out on. Usually these are every week, every Friday of every week in Japan, Gunpla comes out, which is crazy. I love it. So the 12th there more than likely is a Friday. These haven't been organized yet, nor have the ones for February and March just yet. Probably because right now it's Oshogats in Japan, which is essentially like Christmas and New Year for us in the West, where you don't really do anything, nobody really does anything, and they're not doing anything. So that will be updated sometime probably after the 7th, I think all the Japanese are back to work. But let's go first. First up, on the first week of releases, which is the 12th, we've got the next Haropla. I haven't looked at any of these yet because the little mascot kits and whatnot don't really interest me so much, but from this year I'm going to try and review 100% of everything Gunpla that comes out. So that is going to include this little guy right here. And this guy does look a lot more fun than the Harrow plan that came out before because it's got a body. It's got arms. It's got legs. It can use weapons That is awesome. So there he is with his little body flip him around to the back little thruster He's even got these little exhaust pipes out the back. That is so cute and so cool And there he is with some weapons which gives you a good idea of scale. These are the weapons from The Trans Am Infinity Heavy weapon system version of the double O diver sky. I'll pop him up on the side there so you can put them side by side and kind of guess what size this little guy right here will be. Pretty much the same size as your standard high grade Gundam. Let's move down here just to see if we've missed anything. This has been translated by the site itself, not by Google Translate or anything like that. You can see it down here in the bottom corner. So when it seems a little bit weird, like hauling on board is removable, then that's because it's just a bad translation. So I assume that means. Haro on board is removable, not hauling. But besides that, it tells you everything, the contents, five sprues, one manual, no stickers. On to the next one. So in that next week then, we've got the only real serious high grade, which is the Or Jaja. So the Or Jaja is from Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zeta, looking pretty cool, and this, and it, this is always my biggest complaint. This is something I'd love to see a master grade of, these awesome over-the-top 80s Double Zeta designs, but you'll never get that potentially might get a Reborn 100, but if you love mobile suits like these, or this one right here, then this is probably the best you're gonna get. And it looks like an all right high grade, but it doesn't look like anything crazy. I love its beam rifle, looking cool. Actually, all of it looks cool. There is the last image showing what we get with it, which is the beam saber, which funnily enough has a scabbard, that is pretty cool, and just that the shields can move to the front. Anything down here in the info that's gonna tell us any more about that, but mm, doesn't seem to be. Things like that, you can probably guess what they mean, that the shields can be moved to the back and to the front. So yeah, that comes with foil seals, instruction manual, and 12 molded articles, aka runners. Next one. So the next thing we're gonna be getting then on the 12th is another mascot character, which is Ayame. Of course, she is from Mobile Suit Gundam, not Mobile Suit Gundam, Gundam Build Divers. 
So that just finished up recently. We are getting a season two of that. She was a lot of people's favorite character and a lot of you guys did ask me to review the Zero Maru, which I never did because I didn't pre-order it in time and it just went right out of stock. So that's her there. And speaking of Zero Maru, that is also coming out in January in this new version right here. So as you can see, it's got a new dragon vibe, lots of crystals, and it still has a transformation to an almost high grade looking kit. Again, the reason I didn't order this is because it's an SD, even though it does transform into a Gundam style thing. If it's anything like that Fumina kit that came out from Bill Divers Try, then the transformation is probably absolute garbage, but at the same time, it's a funny, funny little kit. There is the contents of the box, six brews, one set of stickers and instruction manual. So just the standard. There is the equipment it comes with, which is a new shield apparently. Two kunai, rifle, some kind of effect apparently. And do we get a stand or anything? Doesn't look like it. On to the next one. So these including the RX Zero Maru we just looked at there are all kind of coming out at random times. You don't know when they are coming out yet, what weeks, what Fridays of January, but I'm sure that'll be updated soon. I will do an update to this video right here once we get some dates, just so you know when they're coming out. And before I actually move on to this absolute beauty down here, I will mention this right here. This is pretty funny. Do any of you guys remember back in the day, back when Dragon Ball Z was coming out and the internet was absolutely garbage? that people always assumed that the next level after Super Saiyan 3 would have been some kind of white-haired Goku and then how many years later? 20? Is it 20? It must be 20. We finally get a silvered hair Goku in Dragon Ball Super which has gone off the rails with all this Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan nonsense which is awesome but it's absolute nonsense. But onto this right here, which is the Master Grade Sinanju Stein narrative version. So if you haven't seen my review of the High Grade, it was one of the best High Grades to come out this year. Actually, a bit of a spoiler for the best kits of 2018. It was the second best High Grade that came out this year, in my opinion. It was such a good kit, and this looks great as well. This is getting pushed so hard by Bandai, it even has this little kind of postery kind of detail talking about thing right here which basically shows you everything it comes with so it's got a whole lot of nice articulation it's got those sleeves which makes it a sleeves mobile suit and it's got that high beam rifle and that bazooka which can in that really awesome Sinanju style way combine together into a massive massive gun the Sinanju Stein the master grade of the Sinanju Stein is my f all time favorite version of Sinanju the reason is the real grade is a bit dodgy the original red one was a bit dodgy in the waist and no matter what version of the red one you get, the standard full frontal one in Master Grade, it still has all those crazy stickers or you have to paint it. That's a kit that could really do it a 2.0 with some of that cool real grade gold. But all in all that looks like it's going to be an absolutely awesome kit. 31 runners, one set of foil seals, we get water slides, really? Really? I'm impressed if we actually get water slides and an instruction manual. All in all, this looks like it's going to be one hell of a kit. On to the next one. So the next on the list down here, and oh, this is something I have to mention right now. I went into the look at this Broly earlier on, and look at this. His pants look like a sack of eggplants. That's just weird. What the fuck? These figure rise standards. I built one before, they're okay, but when they're unpainted and just built as standard, they look weird as hell. But what I was going to get onto is this right here. This has got me somewhat excited and annoyed both at the same time. And the reason that is is because if we take a closer look at the GBN base Gundam right here, you may recognize that from something else. So I'm going to move on to the next thing that's coming out in January, which is this right here. And I'll get back to the other one and you'll see why. And this is just the heavy weapon system that came with the Trans Am Infinity version of the Gundam 00 Sky, but of course it's not in that pearlescent color, as well as the SV parts that came with the most recent release of the Age 2 Magnum, which I have right now, I haven't built yet, and I need to get to, but with so many things happening right now, with the best Master Grades, not best Master Grades, it hasn't been best Master Grades for years, best Gundam video currently in the works, I have to put that off a little bit. But anyway, what I'm getting at is this right here. Look at this torso. This is the awesome Jim Jim, one of my favorite high grades of all time. I honestly don't keep that many high grades because I don't have the space for them. There is a few and this is one of them as well as the origin version of the Zaku. They're kits I just love and cannot get rid of. So look at that torso, look at those legs. Well, look at that torso and the general shape of the legs. This right here, and especially if you move to here where you can see the splitting shoulders, is 
basically the Leopard Da Vinci again, which is the high grade Jim Jim and also the basis for the high grade guard frame, which is another one of my all time forever high grades. They're just so good. The articulation is great. They're solid as a rock. They're one of those kits you could throw in your pocket and bring somewhere for just taking photos or messing around with. So solid, so awesome, so simple. But they went and fucked it up. Why, oh why, did they make it in pearlescent? It looks exactly like the same style stuff they did with the uh, 00 Sky Higher Than Sky phase. It does not look good. They should have just made it in the standard RX-78 2 colors. It would look so much better and would have been a great place to start for a sort of custom Gundam or something like that because it's such an absolutely perfect base. Hence the GBN base Gundam and the frame of this, the runner, is actually called the GBN base frame. So this is so awesome and so ruined at the same time and that is just eight runners, one foil seal, well one foil sticker sheet and the instruction manual. However, still pretty cool, but god those colors, why? We saw this guy so we don't need to see that again. So back to the list and that is everything that's coming out as standard releases in January. But that is not everything that's going to come out. Of course there's P Bandai and this is something I'm going to complain about all the time. I'm going to keep complaining about all the time is the fact that the best releases are the P Bandai releases and those are pretty hard to get unless you do live basically in Japan or any of the Asian countries that do supply them. And even at that you have to pre-order them in advance and I'm never that organized enough to pre-order something in advance. I usually buy it as it is and by that point someone's hyped the price up or is secondarily reselling them. P Bandai needs to open up internationally. They have to. They really do. I really want their stuff. And starting with the first one, which is the Master Grade Gym 2 Semi Striker. So this is him right here and he looks absolutely awesome. I've had a renaissance of sorts lately with gyms. I never liked gyms. Thought they looked like the original Gundam but crapper and I don't know, the more I've built, I don't know if it's the recent ones, the recent P Bandai ones, the gym dominance as well as the, what it's based on which was basically the gym sniper and the gym colony type, those were such good awesome kits and they really, really made me love the gym. And this one right here looks great, it's kind of in an off-white towards kind of beige and that weapon is so crazy. This is what makes it the gym semi striker and that is basically this long spear right here which is two beam sabers on a stick. Awesome. All in all it looks like a pretty epic kit and definitely one I would not say no to. There is the gist. This however is translated unlike the last website from uh, just standard Google Translate. So there's a quick look through that. What we get is the twin beam spear, bazooka, beam rifle, Water slides with this guy, that is so cool, and all in all, that looks epic. On to the next one. So the next P Bandai kit and the second release from Double Zeta in this month is this right here, which is the Gaz R and the Gaz L. These, just like I mentioned, are from Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zeta, and they are based on this year's release of the Galbadi Rebec. That's the high grade Galbaldi Rebec, which is an epic kit. I didn't build it, I did build the Galbaldi Rebec, of which, with that kit, you can build the original Galbaldi just in a kind of sandy rebake colors. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of this metallic injection look at all. I think they'd look better if they're just in standard gray and red, but uh, I guess they want to make them look kind of premium and they do come with a lot. On to the next one. So going from awesome to not so awesome to awesome again, and this is the high grade Leo flight unit. Of course, that is from new mobile report Gundam Wing. So there is what it looks like in that epic blue that reminds me of the Ares. And hopefully this year we will see a high grade Ares. Last year we saw the high grade Leo, so I don't see why we won't see a high grade Ares this year. Moving down you can see that there was a premium banda, you probably know this already, but there was a space type Leo that has such an epic beam rifle. And this guy right here has such cool weapons. Look at that loadout compared to the standard high grade Leo. We've got that big old flight unit, those shoulder cannons, those boosters, we've got a bazooka and a dober gun. This is getting as close to the tall geese as you possibly can. Look at that. Two of them. I'm going to assume it does not come with two. You need to buy two to get that, but look at that. A blue Leo with two Dober guns. What more could you want? That is so cool. And another awesome premium Bandai kit. But anyway, back to the list. So next up then is another gym style kit. Of course, that is the Jagan D. And because, like I mentioned already, 
I'm on a complete and utter gym bender, this right here is something I want so much. That color looks so much better than the standard jagged minty green, and that cool little machine gun right there looks so nice. All in all, this is a pretty cool high grade. This is an awesome take. Look at that head. That is such a cool version of the head right there. That kind of pinky red clear part in there. All in all, that looks great. Comes with the standard Jagan loadout plus that cool little submachine gun. But all in all, that is really nice. And another premium Bandai I would not say no to. Definitely not. On to the list again. So the last two coming out this month are both 1-100 scale. And first up is the Master Grade 1-100. Hyakushiki Crash. Just look at it. This is cool. This is what I wanted when I saw the Delta Plus. The Delta Plus kit is a transformable master grade from Gundam Unicorn. And the Gundam Unicorn master grades were all a little bit sketchy. They all fell apart. A lot of them were incredibly, incredibly weak. The Master Grade Unicorn's not great. The Master Grade Delta Plus is definitely not great. And then we had some of the other things. What were they called again? God, it's absolutely slipped my mind. The blue things. Rezzle. That was it. The Rezzles. They fell apart too, especially the AB Defensor Unit. Big beige one. I'm still trying to put it back together. I've got all its parts in a big bag somewhere, and I'm still trying to put it all together. If you're ever going to get any unicorn kits, I advise that you glue them. But anyway, I'm totally digressing here. This is based on the Hyakushiki 2.0, I assume. It doesn't say there, but I'm going to guess it is, because that kit was so damn good. So good. And this makes it look so epic. Look at that. It almost looks skeletal around the midsection there. Those empty looking sides to the legs. All in all, this looks so cool. This, once again, is from Jim and Bowles World Challenge. Which, of course, we saw multiple kits from before, which are the Jim Dominance. The absolutely and utterly fantastic Gundam Stormbringer, as well as the ultimately cool Polypod Ball. And the Quebla as well. I don't have the Quebla. Some of those reviews are coming up soon. Not the Quebla, sadly. And probably not this. Not anytime soon. But it is such an awesome take on the Hyakushiki. That black, that awesomeness, the Hyakushiki crash looks so damn awesome. Again, it's not fair how awesome the P-Bandai kits are. Not fair at all. On to the next one. So the last release from Premium Bandai, before I mention that actually, this down here, the very bottom one, is what's coming out as an exclusive in the Gundam base Tokyo for this month, which is just the high grade Blue Destiny Unit 1 exam, it says there. I'm not going to be taking a look at that, but what I will be looking at, and the last thing that's coming out this month on the online shop, is Quest's version of the Yacht Doga. So there it is right there. I didn't particularly like the Reborn 100 Yacht Doga. It was okay, not great, not bad, but it's just kind of... I'm feeling that the Reborn 100 design is starting to struggle with the size of some of the kits. Considering the Nightingale was its first kit, I assumed they would kind of deal a little bit better with size. They're meant to be for size. Meant to be for size. The line is meant to be for kits that were too big to make as Master Grades, which I think is a total excuse, because this line, with its weird little polycap joints that are used for everything and anything don't really hold together that well. The bigger they are, like the Hama Hama, they kind of fall apart. The smaller ones aren't so bad. For example, I have the Ifrit and I have the Gundam Mark III and both of those kits are great. They're fine, absolutely fine. There's nothing great about them, there's nothing awful about them. They're a standard 1-100 no-grade kit that does what they need to do and no more. However, these tend to fail a lot and just not really work out, but Anyway, that's too much about that. The difference is between this one and the original one is it comes with a beam Gatling gun as well as these sleeve sections to make the unicorn version. So this is just a painted version. No, like this does not exist. This is using an arm or should I say it's using the machine gun from the Master Grade Giradoga and these arm sections come with this kit, but they don't come in this color. You would have to paint it yourself to look like this. It does say something down there about the unicorn version of the Gira Doga, but the gist I'm getting from this right here is that this kit comes with these arms. You need to use the Gira Doga backpack and gun and paint it all up to look like this. So it does give you the tools to make it without customizing, but you still need to paint it to get this unicorn version. But all in all, I think it's kind of odd to release the green version as a full release and this one only as a limited release because they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? 
an odd decision to say the least. So pretty much that is it for January. So let's take a quick look back through that again. We've got that cool little Haro with arms and legs, the high grade Jaja, the Poochie guy, Kiara guy, Ayame, that new version of the Oryx Zero Maru, the awesome looking master grade Sinanju Stein, that cool but the wrong color in my opinion, high grade GBN base frame, and as for the P Bandai kits, it's the Gym Semi Sniper, that's master grade, the high grade Gazes, the awesome high grade flight unit of the Leo, high grade Jagan D, master grade Hyakushiki Crash, and the reborn 100 Yak Doga Quest version. So that's enough about January, let's see what we're going to be getting in February. So here we are onto the schedule for February 2019. So as you can see, this is completely not in order. The Bandai hobby site has translated it for me, even though I did not ask. And all in all, it seems like we're not getting a whole lot of Gunpla as regular releases this year. And we're getting some crazy looking, and I mean absolutely crazy cool looking P Bandai kits again. P Bandai is going mad. Is all the good Gunpla going to end up in P Bandai? It is not cool. But anyway, first up right here is Karoro Gunso which is Sergeant Frog. And this says that this is a anniversary kit. So I think this kit has been out for a while. I'm pretty sure I saw it on the shelves in Japan. This is pretty cool. And if you've never seen Sergeant Frog, I'll try and throw the clip in right here if I can find it. He is absolutely and utterly obsessed with Gunpla and in one episode literally builds a Gundam Gunpla to fight in, which is pretty cool. So if you've never watched it, I recommend giving it a go. So this is the Karoro Robo Mark II, and this is probably going to be sticker heavy because this is aimed at kids. It says two sheets of stickers, six runners, and one manual, but all in all, that's a pretty cool little kit. Wouldn't mind actually taking a look at that. That is pretty cool. Awesome. The next thing up, and it's not necessarily Gunpla, but it's close enough for me to take a look at. So this is the 160th scale Arbalest version 4 from Full Metal Panic. There is a new anime right now of Full Metal Panic. I think it's coming back again sometime this quarter, sometime in spring. But honestly, I haven't watched the first season yet. It's something I've been putting off and whatnot. If it is good, let me know down there in the comments and I'll go check it out. But I've never taken a look at any of these kits yet. I think only one has come out so far. I'll pop that up on the left there for you to see. Is that like the Levitine or the Levitine? I'm not sure exactly how you say that. But one thing that is interesting about these is I'm not sure how big they are because it doesn't say it right there. They are 160th scale and of course the mecha from Full Metal Panic are quite small when you compare them to Gunpla, but I like the fact that they made them 160th scale, which means they're on the same scale as perfect grade Gunpla. So if you got yourself one of these, got yourself a perfect grade and put them side by side, you'd see exactly what they look like side by side, scale wise, size wise. But I'm pretty sure you can see that in a bunch of Japanese games like there is a game I can't remember the name of where you can play as a bunch of different robots. It's not Super Robot Wars, it's something else. It was 3D, like New Victory something, blah, blah, blah. I remember I had it for a while when I was in Japan on the PS3, I think. I'll pop it up on the right there. If I can find a clip or something, I'll pop that up too. But basically, you could get the gist of how small some kits are compared to the others. And I never really gathered just how small these Full Metal Panic kits mobile suits, I nearly said mobile suits, mecha, mecha, these full metal panic mecha are compared to Gundam, and how small Gundam are compared to other mobile suits, it's really crazy to think of them side by side if they were fighting in the one universe. But anyway, this looks like a solid kit, I haven't seen the other one, the Levitine, or whatever it's called, and I haven't seen any reviews or pictures of it, I just completely forgot about it, it came out last October I believe, but anyway, here is what comes in the box. There are almost 20 runners, 19 in total, one set of stickers and one instruction manual. Uh, there is no image here of everything that it comes with, so we cannot see the weapons, but there is another one out later, I think in March, that does show some weapons and stuff. But uh, it looks cool. Definitely looks pretty awesome. Right there, it does say what the accessories are, which is the XL2 emergency deployment booster. That, I guess, is that flight unit on its back. And we get an action base, so that means we get that action base there, which is a full release action base. That is nice. We get a shotgun, a molecular cutter, which is the knife, I'm sure. Facial parts for reproducing the knife jaws, which of course is the way that they keep their knife in their face. As well as what looks like some kind of effect parts, I assume. And uh, I assume that's another weapon, I have no idea. But all in all, looking cool. I'd love to know what size it is compared to... Uh, all in all, looking pretty cool. I wonder what size it is compared to a Gundam. Hey, I'll just Google it and find out. Or not. See what I mean? Shitty internet. But anyway, hopefully these videos will get much better. 
once I actually don't have to load everything up in advance before being able to talk about it. Anyway, back to the list of what is coming out in February and next up then we've got the high grade build divers Gundam Zerakiel. So there isn't a whole lot to say about this, it's from Gundam Build Divers Break, just like the Gundam Shining Break we saw last month. I know you said last year and that would be correct. Another kit that I had to put off for a little while, I have it built, it's actually quite good. Nothing exciting, nothing crazy and it's not from the Build Divers anime at all, it's from the side story, once again Gundam Build Divers Break. So it looks pretty cool. It looks like it's based on a throne from Gundam 00. That's the vibe I get. It definitely looks like it. Well, definitely with the GN condensers there in the arms. And I'm not sure how that will be. It transforms. Looks pretty cool. And a high grade I can't wait to take a look at. Does it come with a base? No, it doesn't. It shows it on one. But the kit does not. Oh, it does come with a base. Pretty cool. So all in all, looks like a solid enough kit. Should be okay. On to the next one. So moving down the list there, there are some other things from the Mecha Collection. I don't take a look at those. We're getting a blue LED unit. What would use the blue LED unit? Hmm, is there a kit that's coming out that will use a blue LED? Not sure, honestly. If you know, let me know down there in the comments. But as for me, I have no idea. On to the next one, and that is the unicorn version of the high-grade Gustav Karl. So this is one big mobile suit right here. Big and broad. I'm not sure exactly how tall it is, it might be just your standard height or so. So apparently this is the first ever version of the Gustav Karl at all, according to that. It could be wrong, I could be picking that up wrong, it is a bad translation. But that looks big, bulky and pretty cool. I'm not sure how it will turn out in the end. Sometimes bulky kits don't have the greatest articulation, especially in high grade form. But all in all, it looks pretty cool. And ooh, this does get a little poster thing. So apparently in the side armor we've got that beam saber, something about a slide in the joints there and we have some gimmicks which are some missiles in the forearm armor and a shield that moves around from the back a la the Jesta. Looking good, pretty cool. Next one on the list and as you can see it's a pretty weak month so far for Gundam releases and my guess for why that is is because it falls between January and March. In January, kids have a lot of money because of Oshogats and a thing called Otoshidama, which is basically a ton of money people give them. Loads of people have to give them. You have to give them to any kids you know, basically, like like a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollars or something like that per person. So they'll have plenty of money to spend on Gunpla and stuff like that. So that's why it's probably kind of high grade, high grade, high grade, no master grade, nothing really aimed at the more middle-aged or whatever collectors. So that's probably why we're getting a lot of small and high grades and why we're not getting a whole lot. March is another story altogether, we'll be seeing a lot then. But anyway, the next on the list down here is the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Freedom Gundam. I've never taken a look at any of the Cross Silhouette kits. I've always meant to, but I never bothered. Does this one come with the inner frame? That's one thing I've noticed from looking at them. Some come with an inner frame, some don't. You have to buy the inner frame separate, and this is kind of just like a little armor set for on it. I'm not sure exactly how good these are. I could assume they must be somewhat better than a standard SD because of the little frame that's inside. They don't have the full SD proportions. They're a little more uh, elongated, I guess. The head is a little more in proportion to the body than your standard SD. But yeah, the frame is sold separately, so you are just buying a little armor kit with this. So seven sprues, one set of stickers, and a manual. It comes with the beam sabers, beam shield, and the beam rifle. But anyway, back to the list here, and what is coming out as part of P-Bandai in February is ridiculous. Especially when you compare it to the standard releases. The standard releases are quite weak. What we get with P-Bandai is crazy. I will mention just before getting into those that at the Gundam-based Tokyo in February, the limited release is the limited Ifrit Custom Metallic Gloss Injection, and that is a high grade. But look at that. Look at what is coming out from P-Bandai. Master grade, high grade and one hell of a high grade I'll mention, real grade, master grade, and a high res. That's crazy, let's jump right in and take a look. The first on the list is this right here, and this is insane looking. The amount of crazy versions of the Astray has probably topped everything for master grade, crazy, crazy kits with a lot piled on. The, ah, seriously. Okay, this thing just keeps popping up on me. Sometimes it'll let me go to the actual pages and then I will get this so sorry about the bit of an interruption there I actually had to go and say I was from Hong Kong in order to look at this. This is ridiculous But anyway as I was saying 
the amount of variants or some over-the-top variants of the Astray is crazy with such an amount of stuff loaded on top. This right here, the only thing that hasn't been available before, as far as I know, is this new over-the-top V-fin right here with the explosive effect parts on them. That as well as the transfers. I was considering getting this just because it's so cool and over-the-top, but I've built this kit so many times, I don't know if I have it in me anymore. This just seems like it is a variant of the Master Grade Astray Red Frame, the one that was on Premium Bandai, not the Kai that you can get normally because the backpack, the booster right here, looks the standard version as far as I can see. And then the only extra things were these which came in a Hobby Japan magazine at some point before. They're like Kettle Witch or something like that, I'm not sure what they're called. So all in all, it does look cool, really cool. But at the same time, I felt like it's something I've built so many times. Some of you guys might be the same. So this right here, for me, even though it looks great, is not something I would be in a rush to buy. But at the same time, I can appreciate how epic it looks. Next up then, from the online shop, is this right here. Which was just recently announced and is coming out quite quick. And that is the Neo Zeong... Ugh, hold on. <coughs> it's killing me. That is the white version, or should I say grey version, of the Neo Zeong for use in with the narrative. That's the Sinanju Stein narrative. So that looks pretty cool. It seems to come with some unique new parts, which makes it look like this. It's given me a real Overwatch Zenyatta vibe right there, but I'm sure it's probably based on something else. And interestingly enough, the Sin Anju Stein is included. I don't know if that was the same with the Neo Zeon. I don't know why I didn't get the Neo Zeon when it came out. For some reason, well, maybe it's something like that right there. That might be why. But uh, yeah. It comes with water slide decals, it gets the big psycho shard backpack thing, it comes with absolutely everything that you see here, so it really is an ultimate Neo Zeon pack. That looks really cool, and another awesome B-Bandai kit. On to the next one. So next up then is a variant of the real grade unicorn, Banshee Norn, and this of course is the final battle specification. So as for what is new in here, I didn't take a look this year at the Banshee Norn. I don't know why, I think it was because I was uh, between places at the time, to put it lightly. It was back in the dark ages of the channel. So what is extra? Is it that big new armed armor DE? Is that it? The fact that it's green in the cycle frame? I assume it's a combination of both of those. So yeah, it says new molding of the color for the psycho frame, which is the green psycho frame. It transforms, which is normal, it has the Armed Armor DE, as well as the Revolving Grenade Launcher. I'm not sure if either of those came with the standard version of the Banshee Norn or not. If you have it, you'll know. If you don't, you could just Google it, I suppose. I would, but again, my internet is awful. Really bad. On to the next one. So next up then is the After Image Color version of the Master Grade Gundam F91. So there it is. So it is basically just the F91 Gundam with a clear outer armor. A semi-clear outer armor, I should say. Not a whole lot really to see there. I don't know if it comes with anything extra. It comes with a base for holding multiples of them. So you don't need one, you need two. I'm going to assume at 4,000 yen you do not get two of these in the box. And it doesn't seem like you do. So basically this right here is pretty boring. It's just a clear outer armor and inner armor, actually, it's all clear, variant of the Gundam F91. On to the next one. Now this right here is pretty crazy that this is an online exclusive only. It is a high resolution kit of the Katoki version of the EW, or should I say Endless Waltz, Wing Gundam. So, this was one of my first ever kits that I ever built, which was the Master Grade, I mean, not this right here. So it would be cool to get this guy right here. And it's not incredibly expensive, really, when it comes to the price of these kits. It's fairly normal, but it does suck that you'd have to buy it in advance or buy it from a reseller. But all in all, that looks nice. That looks exceptionally nice. Some people may like them, some people may hate them. I find they're getting better, and what I'm talking about by them is high-resolution kits. The Barbatos was really good, but it kind of went a bit wonky, especially in the knees after a while. I didn't move my uh, Wing Zero around too much just to maintain it in its absolute perfect form without it getting all loose and breaky on me. But this year's high-resolution Astray was 
actually really impressive. It really impressed me. But still, it would be cool to get something like this. And I don't know why they made this a P Bandai release. I'm wondering that a lot about a lot of kits lately. So that is it for February. All the highlights really do seem to be P Bandai. And as for what's coming out regular Gunpla wise, it seems that it might be a bit of a light month. But anyway, let's move on to the biggest month for me anyway of the year so far. And that is March. So here we are with March and we've got a whole bunch of things coming out. Let's take a quick overlook of everything that we'll be seeing. So we've got the high grade narrative C pack that is essentially its final form I guess. We've got the 160th scale Gurns back 4. Again that just like with the Arbalest is from Full Metal Panic. And we've got two and I repeat two master grades. That is Gundam Dynamis and Gundam Age 2 Magnum. Totally excited about those. I actually even made a video about those and just generally master grade in general. And besides that, we've also got the figurized standard Bill Divers IMA. I actually was extremely, extremely impressed with the Diver Nami, so I'm pretty sure that'll be pretty cool too. What's coming out from the online shop, thankfully isn't that crazy, so we're getting better full releases than P-Banda releases, and they have not announced yet what will be at the Gundam Base Tokyo yet. So it is getting a little lighter. There may be some more things put in here, especially in the P Bandai zone at some point in the future, because again, this is three months, well, two months in the future from now. So it might fill up a little more. Let's jump right in and see what we've got. First up there is the narrative Gundam C pack. So it's got itself a bit of a unicorn vibe now. So I thought they would fill this in a little bit more because I was falsely under the impression that there would be more to narrative besides just the one movie, but it seems like that's all there's gonna be. So I guess this is the final form. I would like to see something there, 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 and there personally, just for a finished different version, but this still looks pretty cool. So this is the C packs. We get a new shield, rifle, the hands are pretty much the same as are the beam rifles, and of course all those little psycho frame sections for all around it giving it that unicorn vibe anything down here it is 11 runners one set of seals which is stickers instruction manual and it's just shield beam rifle and beam sabers so all in all it looks pretty cool definitely looking nice actually for a second there i thought that was the unicorn on to the next one so moving down the list and next on the list is the gurns back i'm gonna try and speed up a little bit this video is taking longer than i thought uh of course, if you are still listening at this point, let me know down in the comments what you think of these kind of videos, what you'd like to see changed, or if you like them just the way that they are. But there is the Gurns back, again, 160th scale, once again, full metal panic, and look at that forehead right there. So, there you can see the sort of weapons that come with it. And I love the full metal panic weapons because they're like standard military weapons, submachine guns, sniper rifle, a combat knife, it's pretty damn cool, I think. It suits better at least to my tastes with a mecha than like beam weaponry that kind of look a little bit made up and awkward looking I guess. But there is what it comes with, 17 runners in this kit, definitely not bad. And a whole bunch of accessories as well, looking forward to that one. On to the next one. So now moving down to the two kits that for this year I'm the most excited about. I've talked about them already so I won't talk about them too much and that is the Master Grade Dynamis right here looking awesome. That big sticker on the rifle scope looks a bit weird, but uh, could be better. But all in all, it looks pretty damn awesome. I'm looking forward to that. We're looking at 17 runners. We get some marking stickers in here, so that means they're not decals at all. PP sheet, I'm not sure exactly what that is. I assume it's for these little sections in here, the little holographic tabs, just like we would have saw on the Exia. So all in all, that looks pretty cool. I am definitely hyped for that right there. And speaking of hyped, I'm also hyped for this. And I spoke about this before as well. So I won't waste your time too much with this guy. But this is the Master Grade Age 2 Magnum from Gundam Build Divers. So oddly enough, the only Build Divers Master Grade that's seen a full release is the Age 2 Magnum. Probably because they didn't have to do a whole lot to modify the actual Age 2. So this is 23 runners. A lot of that may be wasted because it is based on a uh, existing kit, so expect to see a lot of leftover plastic. And we've got dry decals in here, standard stickers. I'm not necessarily sure what a Nemer seal is. Uh, I assume that's those 
reflective ones that go behind the sections like the A here. You do get a reflective sticker for in behind those to make them pop a little more. That's something about the age line I thought was really nice. And we also have foil seals. So the foil seals would be the ones you get on the eyes. So I'm not sure exactly what the marking decals are. I don't really see many decals on its surface. I guess it's just the standard little red caution decals and stuff. So all in all, it seems like this is going to be a pretty packed box and looking forward to that one. And the last of the main Gunpla releases that are going to be coming out in March is the Figurize Standard Bill Divers IMA. So this is essentially just like what we saw with the Diver Nami, which was quite impressive compared to those old, horrible, Fumina, nightmare-esque Gundam Girl kits we saw before. So this right here should be fine if you're into this sort of thing right here. So back to the list. That is all that's coming out this month. So let's move into the three P Bandai kits that have been announced so far for that month. And that is the Jim Cannon Redhead. So a very old school looking Jim Cannon right there. Like I said, I'm on a complete Jim Bender, but this one, the Jim Cannon is still a little outside my taste personally. It just looks a bit awkward, a bit bulky, and maybe Maybe someday these will grow on me, but not just yet. But again, looking like a pretty awesome kit. Moving down and it comes with water slides and it is based on the gym version 2.0. On to the next one. So that's a master grade. We also have a reborn 100 and a high grade and the reborn 100 is this right here, which is just a variant of last month's reborn 100 gun EZ. This is the gun blaster and there is a comparison side by side with the gun EZ there. And as you can see, it's pretty much essentially the same with a slightly different color scheme and I think a slightly different backpack. And they are both of them with the Victory Gundam. So I'm not sure how this will be. Mine hasn't arrived yet because of all the delays with the Christmas post and whatnot, but I will be reviewing the Gundam EZ pretty soon and then I'll have a lot more to say in that video about that. But anyway, this isn't something that excites me entirely and it seems like something that if you've got the skills, you could probably fairly easily whip up with the gun easy actually no, the gun easy i don't think comes with that backpack so that is probably the biggest difference yeah right there the booster pack so i guess if you do want it that's where you're gonna have to get it and then the last thing getting released in march is the high grade rig log so this basically is just a variant of the Gelgoog from unicorn pretty awesome looking beam rifle there pretty much the same thing we saw with the gira doga and all in all that is it there. That's its loadout. Actually, that's quite the loadout. And looking pretty cool. And that is it for March. So, of course, the highlights there is the final full version for now, and I guess maybe forever, which is the C packs of the Narrative Gundam. Those absolutely amazing looking two Master Grades, which are the Master Grade Gundam Dynamis and the Master Grade Gundam Age 2 Magnum. So far, looking good and definitely a solid month. And the last month to look at then, of course, is March. March, this is March. And the last month to look at is April. And there isn't a whole lot announced for April yet, so let's take a look at it and see. So here we are with March. There is only one Gunpla release announced so far, and that is the Narrative Gundam B Equipment Extended Set, so the B Packs. And that is Premium Bandai, so there is no standard releases announced just yet. So that right there, Actually, that right there is all you get. You do not get the narrative with it. So you have to have either the C packs or the A packs to use this with. And I can't see you buying a kit just to strip off all the parts or strip off the big mobile armor just to make it into this. That just seems crazy. They should have just made it that bit more expensive and just included the narrative Gundam. This just seems like an odd decision, a very our decision and that is it so basically that is it that is what we have on the horizon for 2019 when it comes to gunpla releases of course this video right here is just a placeholder while i get the best gundams of the year up and running that should be up monday night irish time that's early tuesday asian time and maybe midday or early evening u.s time on monday but anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to come back for a lot of Gunpla reviews in 2019. And as always, I'll see you next time.